our topic today is power user tips and features. And I'm gonna share my screen with you in a moment. Um, but really just to kind of give you an overview, we'll be uh, covering um, some features, some tips, really to just arm you with some things you may not know about in Pipeline that will help you be more efficient today, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen. And you should see the Pipeline dashboard there. So I'm gonna show you a few of these, these features in chunks. Um, the first type of things that I'm going to show you are hidden features in pipeline or ones that you might not be aware of or see in your day-to-day -day usage. Um, the first is the ability to send messages without a transaction name. So let's hop into a transaction here. Now, normally when you send messages through this note email section here, Whenever you type in your subject, um, the system, if, if you don't include the transaction name in your subject, the system detects that and automatically appends or attaches the transaction name to the end of that, um, to the end of that uh, subject. So let's say I were to send this message normally, some test text in there, um, and then send it to myself. Whenever I do so, again, it'll append the transaction name to that subject, and I'll show you what that look like, looks like in a second. Let me go ahead and send a second message here, and this time I'm going to include a special character at the beginning of this message to suppress the subject of the message, and that special character is a pipe, okay? Whenever I en um, enter that pipe at the beginning of a, oh, I'm not in the right section there. Enter it there. And I'll type sending this message without a transaction name. Whenever I include that special character there, and that, that character, by the way, is located um, on your keypad just above the backslash. So whenever I include that character, the system knows do not include the transaction name in the subject. So let me go ahead and send that one. And then you can see here that what that looks like where did it go there we go you can see what it looks like there's the one that i sent normally and it's got the transaction name appended to it and here's one that i sent with a special character and it does not have that transaction name and that's just again for scenarios where you don't want that transaction name to show okay so that's a little hidden feature there another is the ability to to create your own custom reports let me go back to pipeline here head over to my reports tab. And here, um, let's, let's run this closing in 30 days report. Notice when I run this report, again, closing in 30 days, if I look up here in my URL, there's a 30 in there. Anytime I'm running a, a number of days report or any report that's got some custom value in there like 30, I can change that to be what I want. Let's say I wanted to run this to show all transactions closing in 10 days. I can change that 30 to 10 and it'll uh, run the report for 10 days for me. And notice that it also changes the title of that report. Okay, so basically again, I can create my own custom reports whenever I see something like that. So those are um, some ways to, there are some, some areas you may not be aware of. And that rolls us into our next section, which are browser types of features. Um, there are features that are available within your browser, but when you use them in pipeline, they make them even that much more powerful um, and just really take advantage of what you're trying to do in pipeline. So let's go to the first one, which is bookmarking pages. Obviously, we probably all know that we can bookmark our pages, but in pipeline, it becomes even more useful. Um, taking this example that we're on here, for example, I just created this custom report that's um, closing in 10 days. Um, I could save that by bookmarking it. So if I enter bookmark, I drag the icon um, of, a, of a, a web address to my bookmark area. Let's put it here in the first position. Um, and then that way, when I need to access it later, I simply click that link, that bookmark link, and it'll rerun that report for me without having to re-specify the details. Okay, and that works for any searches or sorts 
um, that you're running generally in, in paperless pipeline. And I say generally because pipeline's really smart in that when you run a specific search or sort, it's, it um, references that re the result of that search or sort in the URL so that you can bookmark it, all right? For example, let's say I'm on my transactions page and I do this really elaborate search. Maybe I'm searching for all transactions that close within a period and only those that have a particular status, et cetera. I can run that search, um, get those results, and then again, notice that that URL is very custom so that if I bookmark it, um, I can later access this very specific uh, search that I did by clicking that bookmark and not having to re-specify the details. Okay, so that is another, uh, uh, that's a browser feature that is enhanced uh, within Pipeline. Another is when I am editing a transaction or anything, editing anything in Pipeline where I see um, a text area. Let's say I'm editing this transaction and I need to add more details to this particular um, field. And I just want more, more room. I'm gonna type a lot of information and I need to make that larger. Wherever I see these little diagonal lines in the corner of a, a, of a text area, I can extend those so that I can have more visible area to actually go ahead and type, okay? And that's not just a pipeline feature, that's throughout your browser. So wherever you see those diagonal lines, you can always extend a text area. All right. Um, the next little trick I want to show you is let's say let's say I were running that um, that thirty day report that we were on, and I think I want to right. I need to be able to um, change something in each of these transactions or do something to each of these transactions, and I need to open them all up. Instead of actually clicking on the transaction to open it and then doing what I need to do and then going back to my list and then going to the next one, et cetera, a more efficient way of doing that is to use the browser feature of right clicking to open in a different tab or a different window. So if I use my mouse to right click this, um, any link that will open a different window and say open it in a new tab instead, so I can actually go ahead and open up all of these in separate tabs. That way, as I um, work with each of them, I can make my changes or look at them or do whatever I need to do uh, without fettering my original list there. So I go ahead and edit that, go ahead and close it when I'm done, look at that or edit that, close it when I'm done, et cetera. Um, and again, I've got my original list that, um, so that I don't have to, again, keep going back and forth, okay? And then the last little tip I wanted to show you in that area has, is, it's similar, but has to do with reviewing your docs. So let's head on over to our unreviewed page. And you know that when you're reviewing docs, it's helpful when you can click this link here to open up the uh, transaction in a separate window so that you can um, look, at a, look at the doc in the context of the rest of the transaction. Um, but uh, sometimes, or actually this is, this is helpful when you've got dual monitors, so two monitors. If you've got two monitors, you can drag this window over to your second monitor, which I can't show you during this demo, but you can imagine this is, if this were over on my second monitor, and then the system will remember that position of that second window so that when you go to open another transaction, it opens it in that same position, okay? So that you don't have to, um, you don't have to uh, keep moving it. Um, and again, you've got your two monitors. You're working from your list on this side, and then your um, your detailed transaction on that side. Okay, so super helpful for that. Okay, okay. So that is that. Um, and it'll remember, let me move this back over here. As you open different transactions here, um, it'll remember the position, uh, excuse me, it'll remember, oh, come on, work with me. It'll remember that, um, excuse me, it'll open it in the same window. So if I'm opening different transactions and then I open a different transaction, you don't have a million different windows open. So you don't need to close it each time. It'll just reopen it in that same window. Alrighty. Okay. Um, the next area I want to show you are some uh, huge time savers. So let me hop over to a transaction here. 
um, and they're all related to dragging and dropping. So when I'm sending a message um, in the system and, and I need to send it, let's say to a contact or an outside agent or something, instead of typing their email address, I can actually drag it to the ex external email addresses area. So let's say I wanted to send something to Rob the inspector, I can simply drag him down here to my external email addresses area or to good old Henry or to Matt, et cetera. I can, um, and that'll save me the time of having to type their email addresses. Pretty much once I've got um, contacts in here with their email addresses, I'm never gonna need to type them to send them something from within pipeline. All right, notice, also, though, that when I dragged this contact um, down here, two areas turned orange, both the external and email addresses area and also the message area. And that's because I can drag contacts to this message area as well to share their contact information. Right. So let's say I needed to share Rob, the inspector's um, contact information with the buyer, say. OK, I can just drag that and it'll format it nicely within there. All right. So that's one drag and drop feature. Another is um, if I needed to share a, a doc comment, I could do so. So here I've got a comment that I've got on a document. I could drag that to the message area and it'll share that comment as well. Okay. And then the last area I want to show you that you can drag and drop um, is your, uh, your, your incomplete tasks. So you probably already know that you can append or attach um, batches of incomplete tasks. Let's say all of your incomplete, uh, incom excuse me, batches of tasks. So let's say all your incomplete tasks or all of your completed tasks or all your overdue tasks by simply clicking one of these options here. But you can also send one-offs. So let's say I didn't wanna send the whole, all of the incomplete tasks. I only wanted to send um, these few here, okay? So I'm gonna drag those over and it'll share that contact, and, or excuse me, those tasks. And notice it also includes the due date information and any rules associated with those. Okay. So that should save, save you a ton of time typing. Um, instead of you know, copying and pasting or typing, you can just drag those on over. Alrighty. Um, the next batch of um, tips that I wanted to tell you about are keyboard shortcuts. And these are both convenient and time-saving. Let's say I'm reviewing some docs here. Let me go ahead and collapse that. And so I'm previewing some docs. Let's say I were looking at this uh, full listing agreement. It's an 18-page doc. I can, of course, navigate between my pages using the arrows, the arrow back and forth. But I can also use my keyboard to navigate back and forth. So I can use the arrows on my keyboard. So right now I'm type, tapping the arrows on my keyboard to go back and forth. I can also use the keypad, the number keypad on my keyboard to navigate. Let's say I wanted to jump really quickly to page two. I just type the two and it'll hop to page two for me. Um, it can even do double digits. So if I wanted to hop to page, say, 13, I type one, three, oops, one, three, and it jumps to page 13 for me. So super convenient, especially if you've got a huge doc, 30, 40 pages or whatever, okay? Um, some other keyboard shortcuts, and I'm actually gonna refer you to this super handy um, infographic on our, uh, if you go to our um, help site and type shortcuts or keyboard or any of these words here, it'll get you to this article. And then at the bottom here, there is a keyboard shortcuts infographic that I encourage you to print out. It's got all the possible keyboards that you can, uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use, um, really depending on those actions that you do repeti re um, repetitively so that they'd be easier to remember because you do them all the time. Uh, but again, print that out, see if there are any that are useful for you. I'll go over a couple of, a couple of them here. Um, that would be common ones that most everyone uses. Um, well, many people use. Uh, one is to do to create a new transaction. You would do control on your, on your keyboard, hold down your control, and then Alt keys, and then tap T, and that'll create a new transaction for you. Um, another is Control Alt D to upload docs to unassigned docs. So Control Alt D, and that'll take you to your unassigned docs page. 
But again, check out that infographic because there are several um, keyboard shortcut, shortcuts there. And again, depending on what your regular actions are, they may be useful to you. Okay. Cool. So let's go back to, um, to a transaction now. I'm going to show you two last areas of maximizing pipeline that will save you time. Um, one is doc name matching. So if I'm on a transaction and I'm an admin and I'm previewing these docs, let's say I want to take a look at this HOA doc. Notice when I click this doc over on the right, what happens on the left. So I'm going to click this, the, the, type, the name of this doc and it will scroll down for me and find the matching doc name over here on the left. Okay, so that's really useful when you, particularly when you've got a long list of docs that you need to, um, to review and don't want to, or a long list, list of tasks actually that you, re, you don't want to have to scroll through to get to. Okay, and now one little note here, by matching, meaning this doc name matches this task name. By matching, what I mean is that um, this doc name is included or contained in this task name. So if my task name is called, ah, come on cats, work with me. Review HOA and I click it, it's gonna match when it scrolls down. So again, this doc name needs to be contained in this um, tax task name. So when you're setting up your doc names and your task names, just something to keep in mind to um, have them match and get that added convenience and, and time saver there. Okay. And then the last um, little tip or feature that I wanna mention is um, the at mention, <laughs> mention the at mention feature. Um, you probably know about this and how to use it already. Uh, I can at mention people's names. The most common way of at mentioning someone is using their last name. So let's say at Smith or, you know, whatever the person's last name is. There are other ways to mention them in case you've got uh, people with the same last name. And you can see all those ways of mentioning people if you go to your tasks page and hold, hover over your tasks. You can see the different ways um, you can mention yourself. Um, and, and, and other people as well, meaning their last name, the first part of their email address, um, and their role or their um, um, first initial last name. The role is the one that I really wanted to point out to you because that's the one that's less, lesser known. Um, you know, people most usually know that they can reference people by their name, but they don't realize that they can reference an entire role of people. So if I wanted to reference all of the office staff, for example, which in this uh, account, that's um, the role that I, is assigned to me uh, with the at symbol. Then it will highlight, and all at mentions are highlighted green. So once this yellow fades off, you can see that it highlights that for me because I my role under manage users is office staff. So again, you can at mention individual people, and you can also at mention entire roles of people when needed, okay? And at mention again, highlights tasks here uh, for whoever uh, falls under the, the at mention, whether it's a role or a person, um, as well as on the tasks page, and as well as in the daily reminder emails. I don't have any on this page, but as well as in the daily reminder emails, those will be highlighted 